Photoshop me in. You're right. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. uh, all right, guys. Uh, uh, not a lot has happened, obviously, in the uh, time between Christmas and New Year's and, and now. Uh, so what I can say, though, is the things that I'll be talking about on Monday with my partners is going to be around uh, what happened at the end of this year, or what was the stock market looking like, what happened in the various exchanges around the world. We do business in China as well as India. So we're always interested in knowing, compared to China and India and the US, uh, which of those three areas has the best upside. Uh, and I'm always in interested in looking at the end of the year, what, a what actually happened. Uh, in the case of China, China was down, surprisingly, uh, about 14%. They're what you would call their equivalent of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The thing that's so interesting about business and stock markets and economies is that you have an economy like China that was on fire last year, grew, depending on the statistics, 8, 9, 10%. Hard to say because uh, the country actually reports uh, data that's not always easy to interpret. But you compare that to the United States, which whose economy grew at a couple of percent. The US was up, uh, S&P 500, about 15%, maybe a little less, 15, 14.5%. China's down 14%, which, which always goes to say that uh, it's not enough to invest in a company that's growing fast or an economy that's growing fast. You have to invest in one that's properly valued. Uh, we'll get to Facebook in a second, because I know a lot of people are wondering, wow, that's a super exciting company. True, but at $50 billion, would you invest in it? Uh, to, uh, uh, so on the, on the global market side, I just thought I'd throw out a few stats that I found interesting. Worldwide, the global markets, if you take all the market cap of the world, grew at about 15%, which is really good. And you'd sort of expect after two really tough years, 2010 was going to be great. Uh, we, don't, we play a game at Clearstone, what market is going to grow the fastest or what stock market is going to go up the most. This year, anyone guess? Alex, you usually... Uh, know a lot of uh, bizarre trivia. <laughs> you can't guess. All right, good. I've stumped dollars. You're telling me you're, 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 you're no. you know which I do know. No. Okay, Qatar. Qatar. I know why you said that. Uh, actually, it was the Philippines. The Philippine stock market grew almost 70. I thought you were talking about the year ahead. Sorry. Oh, okay. 77 percent. Uh, uh, and if you think about that for a second, growing your stock market capitalization, 77 percent. I mean, you know, let's think about that. That's it's almost like you 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 double the the number of companies trading on that exchange. In some ways, it's really bizarre. What's what's more uh, fun though to think about is even now, after the Philippine stock market grew 77 percent. Apple has a bigger market cap than all of the Philippines, which is sort of interesting. Having said that, uh, there's probably seven or 800 companies publicly traded in the Philippines, so a lot of great deals. I happen to have invested in one company about 10 years ago, which uh, became the largest company in the Philippines from an employment standpoint. And uh, so I took a pretty interesting, uh, a strong interest in, in what's going on there. Happens to be one of the uh, best places to outsource to if you want to do business in the U.S. because the Filipino culture is very much like the U.S. culture. They have the same vernacular, they watch the same television and program. Uh, number two was uh, Thailand, which was up 60%. And then um, I was really surprised about South America. Chile up 48% and Colombia up about the same amount. What's so amazing about that is 10, 15 years ago, everybody thought Colombia was going to be a failed state. And now I, I know a friend who just went to Bogota over the, over the uh, holidays and said it was just a really great, wonderful, peaceful city. So things can change. The worst stock market, now Alex, I bet you'll get this. No? Okay. Well, that would be Greece. No surprise. Uh, they lost about half their market capitalization. Um, and Russia, by the way, up 21%, also interesting. As I said, the S&P 500, which is really the US market uh, index, up 12% for the year, or 12.5% for the year. Um, I wanted to jump a little bit now to, uh, to uh, Facebook. So 
I'm sure at my uh, meeting on Monday we'll be talking about Facebook and the 50 billion market, uh, uh, 50 billion valuation. I saw a report over the holidays, which I thought was really interesting. There was a question about whether we're in a bubble with uh, the market caps of companies like Zynga and Groupon and Facebook all being very, very high in Twitter. This is interesting. When Yahoo, and they were comparing it to the bubble, the last big bubble. So before the bubble began, you had Yahoo. Yahoo actually, if you consider the bubble beginning in like 1998, Yahoo went public in 96. Uh, they went public one year after they were formed, which I think is was an indication of, of uh, things getting ahead of themselves. Compared to Facebook, which if it goes public in 2012, it'll have been around for eight years. Which is, which is, by the way, about average for what it's taken public, uh, private companies to turn public. Uh, the difference, of course, when Yahoo went public, it raised $30 million in its IPO, which is kind of funny. Uh, it had $1,300,000 million, $1 million in sales, and it had uh, 49 employees. Now, it's hard for me to imagine having 49 employees and being public. Nowadays, with Starbucks, you need 49 people just in your accounting department. Uh, compare that to Facebook, eight-year-old company, as you said, two billion in sales, that's what they project for 2012. But if you guys saw, uh, Goldman Sachs got the ability to raise $1.5 billion of capital for Facebook. And uh, the reason that was interesting, one was because it was at $50 billion, which is a great valuation. The other was that uh, they let they sent out a private placement memorandum which showed how much Facebook had made. It was about $1.2 billion projected for 2010. And uh, well, even more interesting, $335 million in profit. Very, very impressive. Great growth. Now those are like what used to be Microsoft type margins. Uh, but uh, going to Amazon for a second, I said uh, Yahoo went public. They went public at an 800 million market cap. Pretty good. Amazon, they went public at a $440 million market cap. Uh, they were three years old at the time, 15 million in sales. What's interesting, and I've commented on this in the past, is that how companies are taking longer to go public, but what's, what's fascinating to me is, it used to be that the price you went public at if you were a successful company, uh, if you took the market cap you had when you went public and compared it to five years, six years later, uh, the price you went public at might be anywhere from 5% to as little as 1% of your valuation if you were, quote, a successful company down the road. Meaning the public investor who 